Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? I'm just getting the stayer here. Ooh, listen to those bees buzzing in the background. We've got loads of them going now. Uh, the sorb uh, the beehive maker, he's working hard in there. I do like watching that guy at work. It is really quite satisfying seeing him work away. We got the um, the building up there that still needs a little bit of a little bit more work. Um, We've got a pallet of lumber down here, so I might just take that one in a second up to our building up there. But first of all, we want to get this sawmill um, working again. So if we come on around here. So while I am putting this, uh, putting a few of these bales, I'm hoping that I can squeeze some of those bales in. I'm also going to have to try to pick them up with pallet forks because we don't have a bale fork up here for this tractor. Which is a little bit inconvenient, but I'm hoping that I can do this anyway. Um, I have done it in real life with pallet forks. It's not easy, to be honest, because uh, you've got to try and wedge it underneath. However, in this game, it apparently, apparently realism in this game doesn't really matter all that much because I can pick it up. Oh, okay. Um, I could probably do with a weight on the front of my tractor, to be honest, looking at that. Uh, yeah. But we can use pallet forks, apparently. Um... We just come in here. So yeah, my question for this week is which map do you want me to go to next? And the three maps, uh, the, the, the three maps, the five maps that we have on offer um, are... Uh, oh, I see. It sort of goes to... Like, it, it gives the appearance of wood chips, but you're throwing in 4,000 litres at a time. Um, ah, right, so let me just bring this one over here. So yeah, we've got Emerald Valley, which is the logging one. We've got... Um, Dutch polder. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to just uh, pull them off the top of my head, and um, I'm not doing a very good job of it because I'm trying to concentrate on this at the same time. Um, so, yeah, we've got Emerald Valley, which is the uh, the pure logging one, and the, where I'm going to change it round into a different type of map and basically just harvest the trees and get them out of the way. we got Dutch polder, which is a big flat one based in the Netherlands. Then we've got... Um, I'm actually going to think I'm going to put the forks up like this. I think that would be the safest way to travel with them if I'm going to be travelling. I'm not going to travel with those just yet. Uh, I actually need to get that tractor and that tractor over... Ooh, I know what we could do. I wonder... Yes, that might actually be a better way to do it because it would be faster. I could get this one up to the top. We could try putting that one... we got to move stuff around a bit. Um, but anyway, uh, sorry, the weekly question. Let me, let, me, let me concentrate on that. Let me just do the weekly question in a minute. So, yeah, Dutch Polder is the other one. Then we've got Iberian Southlands, which is the four times map set in Spain. we got Gurali, which is the um, the Polish one with 103 fields, is it? I think it is. Um, loads of small fields all over the place. Um, looks absolutely fantastic. That's my personal favourite. Um, and then we've got Drummond Farm, which is the Irish one set in Ireland. And that one is just a medium-sized farm, but I figured we could chuck it in with this lot anyway. Um, yeah, okay, sorry about that. I won't do that again. Actually, that's probably not true. If we end up doing an Irish map, I will probably do that a lot. Uh, I, I, I like the Irish accent. Um, so, yes, we will... There's all sorts of things that we want to do and want to try. And those are the five maps that you've got. Watch my episode at the beginning of this week, which was episode 84... If you want a detailed look at each of those maps. Um, and then select the one that you want me to play on next. That is our next series. Where do you want us to go to next? So it's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. Now then. I am going to get that tractor there. The Valtra. And that tractor over there. Over to the, um, uh, the dealership. That's the word I'm looking for. So that we can get... Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to just take the Valtra over there. And I'm going to carry both the tree planters on the Valtra up to the top. And this tractor here is going to carry the weight. Because what we're going to need... We're going to need to be able to move... Oops. We're going to need to be able to carry the... Um, the pallets of uh, sticks. The, the pallets of um, poplar saplings. Um, to the tree planters, and we, so we're going to carry them up there, and then we're going to load them up. We could load them up back at the dealership, but I'd like to take three pallets up there, and then the rest of them we're changing the setting for the um, the hired help, so that they're going to do it. So let me start getting this one over. That there, we will carry that one, I think, on the Goldhofer up to the top field. Um, 
And then the other one, I've got something else. I've got another mod that I want to use as well. So I'm going to take this one over to the dealership. I'm going to get the Challenger up to the top. I might actually just drive that one up. Probably quicker just do it like that. And then I will see you again. Um, and we can start moving those things up. I also want to keep the sawmill going and we'll move the pallet of wood that is there available at the sawmill before we run off with the stayer. We're going to use that one temporarily at the top. And I might, after that, I might just return the stayer and the um, the loader arm with the pallet fork. So I'll return the whole lot, take it back to the dealership. And then we will lease a JCB skid steer, a little JCB skid steer with pallet forks and a bale spike as well. And we'll bring those back. Oh, and a bucket as well, because we're going to need to be scooping up some of those wood chips around. Um, I'll get all of those things back to the yard. So we'll lease all of those and we'll be using the skid steer for the remainder of this series. At least that's the plan, but like we've found so many times, plans don't necessarily work every time. But anyway, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, we got this one here. I'm actually thinking that we won't worry about um, moving the pallet over there just for a minute. What I would like to do is get the fence here, get this one started up, and there's something that I want to try. There's a new mod that I've just found. It's been released today. Um, which should give you an indication of when I'm actually recording this. Um, this is tomorrow's episode. I've done my day of work where I have been... I've been doing a bit of woodwork today, actually. I've been fitting some doors in someone's house. And, yeah, so now I'm recording tomorrow's episode. And hopefully it'll all be okay. So yeah, I'm going to take the trailer. I'm going to take the fence. We're going to ma make good use of it. Um, so we're going to want this one. I'm going to get that weight on the front. It's going to be a little bit weighed down, but I think that's actually going to be okay. And it's just something I want to see if it works. So we put this one on here like this, and that picks up, and that does weigh down the front just a little bit. It would be better on the back. However, we're going to be using this mod over here. And yes, I did just walk underneath a raised loader arm. Not really the most sensible thing to do, but still. Right. We want this one. It's this bar here. Now, apparently, this is a tow bar. And you put it out, you bring it over, and you set it down on the ground eh, just behind the tractor that you want to use it on, like that. And then hitch it on. So that lifts up onto the back. And what now? Does it. Right, it just. It comes back like that. So it, it stays. Oh no, it doesn't actually. We go like that. We want to bring it up to the next. Oh, I see. It's, it's come up with a hitch on sign. So then we hitch it on there. Oh no. I'm hitched. So why has it got a hitch sign? It's saying hitch. So, oh, may maybe we got to use this one. Maybe it does it on here. Because um, now it's actually nowhere near the front. So you bring that one up to the front like that. And you come on to there, do you? Uh, right, that doesn't hitch there. Maybe it hitches here. It's supposed to hitch on. And I'm not entirely sure how you do it. Right, it doesn't do that, but it's, it's got the hitch symbol. It might... It, there was something about that you had to lift the bar. And I can't exactly remember what we were supposed to do with it. Unless I got it the wrong way round. Let me... Well, why don't we try that for a start? We go here and... No, I don't want to do that. So let's come back to this one. We've got it selected at the back. So we've got detach, change tool selection, attach object... Oh, X! Attach object X. There we go! Right, now we've got it. So we've actually got a proper working tow bar. Let me turn, let me see if you need to have the fence on or not. I'll turn that one off and we'll see what it does. That one's off. And... Well, it's moving it, but it doesn't like it. It's, 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 it doesn't like it at all. So what happens if we turn the engine on? Will it work then? Is it going to do it now? Let me, let me just see what we've got here. So we've got... Detach object, stop engine. Doesn't seem to have any other options. So let me just do that. And now what's going to happen? Right, it's moving it. It's, it's, it seems to be moving it slowly. I mean, we got. To, I wanted to see if we could tow this thing all the way. I thought it'd be really cool if we could. A bit slow. Is it going to? Is it going to turn the steering? Um. See. Actually, this the, the, the thing is, though, the Fent tractor seems to be stronger than the other one. Um, so maybe, maybe, or I'll tell you what we'll do. We will go back on here and we'll press X to un... Oh, no, that was that was hitch. 
we press X to unhitch it off of there, and then we'll unhitch it off of there. Um, we'll move forward a little bit like this, and we'll stop. And then I'll go into the fence, and I'll unhitch the trailer. You've got to go to the actual trailer. We'll bring this over. Um, actually, I think if I do it like this, I don't actually need to move it around too much. So I can hitch that one on. And then I can... Actually, I'll, I'll stop right there for a second, because I want to get that trailer on the back of this tractor, don't I? So let's bring this one back. There we go. And hitch that one on. Excellent. Now if I bring this one over just in front of there, that should be about right. And now finally I go back into the fence and I press X to load it onto there. Now, can we do this? We start moving it. That's actually going a little bit faster. It's going faster than the other one was. My original plan was to try sticking the um, Challenger with this tow bar and then put it onto the front of the voucher. The only issue with that seems to be that the um, Challenger won't take this type of hitch. It doesn't accept this type of hitch on the back. It only accepts a low hitch. So I wouldn't be able to hitch it onto the Challenger. And I thought the Challenger would be so perfect for towing something like this. It would be absolutely perfect for it. Right, so it does kind of work, but it's extremely utterly and painfully slow to move it anywhere. So I'm thinking... I still wanted to kind of use... I wanted to use the um, the fence rather than the auto-load trailer this time round. I wanted to get the fence over there. So I think what we'll do is, it, rather than using the tow bar, um, we'll return the tow bar, and we'll take the... I'll just put them on follow me, and I'll get them over to the dealership, and then I can load the three pallets onto here, and we can take them up to the field as well as the others. I've already got the challenger up in the field. So I will see you in a minute once I'm over to the dealership, and then we can get things loaded up. Right then, we'll put these here, and I'm going to unhitch the trailer and put it there, so that, that can go on to the fence. And I'm going to need to lower this weight down and drop that one off in just a second, but let's just hitch this one back onto the fence. And what I'm hoping is that I can put a pallet in the front of the fence, and then um, two pallets onto the trailer. So I'm going to bring the trailer over here, and I'm going to set that onto... Uh, I don't want it on that side, but if, we are, if I press U, what's it do? Does it, it, do you not get to um, change the side? No, you don't. Right. Let me spin this one around a minute. Well, sort of spin it around. I want to go over to this side. I'm feeling a little bit croaky today, uh, so I'd, I apologise if I sound a little bit odd. Um, but I can't clear my throat properly because I was working in a rather dusty environment, so it's just kind of... Um, it, it just kind of happens. You, you wear... you. You take all the necessary safety precautions. I always do. I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'm not going to risk my health for the sake of putting on a door for someone. Um, but at the same time, you, if you're working with something that's dusty, you invariably will get something in your in the back of your throat. And it's so. It's, it's not perfect. It's not ideal. But you, you kind of put up with it. So what the plan is here? I'm going to pick up that one on the front, and I'm going to put another one on the back. It's not ideal. I won't use it, uh, I won't actually use it like this, um, although that could actually be a really cool way of using it because you go that way up across the field with the one at the back down and then you do your whole um, shift B, change it all round and then you go back the other way <laughs> doing it like this. I, you could have a lot of fun doing that. I think that could work out really, really well. But anyway, I'm going to carry those two like that. And then let's zip over here a minute. Yes, I'm leaving everything running. And this is why I'm carrying the weight on this tractor. But now what we actually need, we need to do this a bit more sensibly. Because we're not carrying the... Um, uh, we don't have the tow bar on. We don't need to worry about that. So what I'll do is I will spin round and I'll use this as a rear weight to offset the weight of the loader arm. Which is actually how you would do this in real life. So there you are. You would have the weight on the back like that. Perfect. Excellent. And now, hopefully, I can get these two pallets. I get my joystick set up just right. There we go. And go into there. Ideal. There's one. We could load them onto those machines over there here, but I don't want to do that. I want to get them up to the field. I've got a feeling that we can't use this trailer to do it. 
Uh, it might just be because I'm trying to dump it on the very back of the trailer and I actually need to put it in the middle of the trailer. Most trailers now, they don't have like an invisible hitbox, although this one does have an invisible hitbox because this is an old trailer maybe? I'm not sure. Okay, fortunately we do have another option, so let's just stop there a minute and we will bring this one over because Quite frankly, I've had several people commenting that this trailer is not really suitable for this tractor. We should have a slightly bigger one. So we're going to turn a shark. Can we turn right way round? Oh, so close. Okay, let's bring that one over here. We'll drop this trailer in here and then spin round again and come back out. There we go. Oh, it won't let me do it while I'm unloading. There, that's better. Excuse me. Um, bring that round. So yeah, we're going to get a different trailer, and there's several on option, but there's on on option. There's several on offer, but there's one in particular that I would like to have a look at. Let's return that one, okay? And let's run over to the store and tippers. Right, this is a pack. I've had it actually installed for a little while, but I forgot to activate it. Um, I think it's that one. No, it's not. No, there was another one. It's it's, it's different farm tech. I think it is. Uh, let's go through. There we go. Metal tech. And you've got all these different types of um, trailers for pallets, for bales, and then you've got the different ones for grain. You've got wheels set up there. So that one there is 1,400. And then this one here, uh, 1,400, 40,000. This one's 21,000, um, which that's actually the same size as the standard one, isn't it? That's 8,000. Oh, no, it's aggro liners that are 21. So, yeah, it's, it's like a, a much bigger version of the metal tech that's in the game so yeah with a, a twin axle on the back um used to transport all of that that one is for bales so and uh, this one here is apparently for pallets so we'll get the one with the pallets and we all set up standard white tires i like to go for wide tires on everything because it reduces um compaction issues so we'll go for the wide tires and we'll lease it as our standard rules for everything oh there's one other thing that i want to do i've decided that you know we got the um let me go to the least items yeah so we got the, the logging trailers we might use those again i'm not quite sure and we lease everything else that we got here all of this stuff we got loads of stuff that we're leasing much of it we do use however that baler we're unlikely to want the baler again and we're unlikely to want the round baler again so i'm going to return both of those because they're a bit expensive um that one is from right up the top field. We got this one up the top field as well. I'll return that one. Okay. And the Ponzi Scorpion King. I know we haven't cut down all the trees that we wanted to, but we got a load of trees down on the ground, which I think will keep us going for a while. And then we could always use the chainsaw to cut more down if we need to. So we're going to return that one. Um, because that is also extremely expensive to keep going. Um, we've got a load of those. And this is all stuff that we kind of... Yes, technically we don't need that, but it's not its not costing us a vast sum of money, whereas some of them are costing us a vast sum of money. Um, and the rest of it, I think, we do need to keep. So we'll keep hold of that. Those, yeah. And the, the stair we're not returning yet. So, yeah, we've, we've returned a whole load of them. That should hopefully lighten the load a little bit with our bills. This tractor. Can we put one pallet into here? Um... The problem is that to tip it, you've got to do that, and I don't want to do that. Because we've leased this tractor, we can't change the options for it, and you can, there, there, if you've got the flatbed option, maybe we should return it. How much does this cost? This is, this is something that we could try, because I really want to, there's other options for this tractor, and it's such an awesome little tractor. Um, it's 45,000 to buy it, or 3,600. You've got platform off, or platform on and that I think is a platform off so then a platform on I think has got straps as well um, that we could keep that the same keep uh, standard and you've got wide tires on there but I don't think you need wide tires on this don't want the front loader attachment either yeah so you've got the two different platforms you've got platform on and off and then a front loader attachment per day is only 400 I'm thinking that we're going to lease another one with the front loader attachment just so that we can see what it's like. Okay, back and back and back. And this is the one. Well, let's just switch this one off because we're not going to use that for a second. This is the other one. And that is the platform. But it's also got a front loader attachment. And how do you use the front loader on this tractor? 
I put the front loader attachment on it. So that's the next thing we want to find out, is how to use the front loader. Um, I'll come over here. I want to get onto you. So we've got, we can put two pallets on that trailer, and then I want to put another pallet onto this one, and we'll use the vent to take it up. Can we put the front loader on here? Actually, let's stick a, a pallet onto this trailer a minute first. Um, go back up round and just dump it on there like that then we're going to turn around i'm just going to unhitch the front loader off of this tractor so that we can see if right i do there right why isn't it let me unhitch i've got to bring down low to the ground ah, that's what you've got to do you just got to lower it down closer to the ground now how do you use the front loader? Because I would have thought that it would have been better if you didn't have the platform in the way. So let's just bring this on. You've got activate uh, toggle beacons, tension belts. Um, that is for the hitch at the back for moving up and down. You can fasten the tension belts if I press L. So they go across a, wow, five tension belts on that tiny little platform. Um, that's it, really. Now, the, the real life ones when you use the um, the loader arm. Look, see, I come in there. So it's not going to let me put the loader arm on the front. What about putting it on the back? Is it, is it a rear-facing loader, maybe? I wouldn't have thought so. Let's just take a look. I'm probably guessing this completely wrong. It's, it says something about loader, but yeah. I don't think there's anything to do with the loader on this one. So we'll bring the tractor over and set it like that. And I'm going to press F1 to get rid of that because it, I don't really like having that up all the time. Get this loader back on. We want to put those two more pallets onto the... I know that was very, very sloppy loading that up, but um, we're, we're running out of time. And I've actually got no idea how much time has gone by now because um, my timer... I, I paused it and then forgot to put it going again, so... I have absolutely no clue. I'm just going to have to go on guesswork now. So we'll dump a second pallet on there. And then I want to get another pallet here over. We will start moving the Valtra in just a minute. It's going to be quite interesting moving that one up the road with those on the front and the back. And bring this one up. I know technically I could just load that trailer on the back. But I wanted to use one of these fence. So if I... Well, I think we'll keep both of these fence. I think I'm, I'm tempted to keep them both. I know I was saying that we were going to buy them, but currently we don't have the money to buy either of them. Um, so, yeah, we'll run a little fleet of fence. And I'll put that one up like that. There. Um, I know how we're going to do this. We're going to do follow me. We're going to use lots of following me's. Following me's. And this one will come out in front. So that one can go there. Mind yourself, sir. Mind yourself. Then we'll get the stayer behind him. We do have to make sure that we go slow enough. The stair has got maximum speed of 26, and so is the fence. Um, so I've got to have to make sure that I slow this, the Valtra down so that it doesn't go too fast. Now, that's on following. Then I'll get the fence back here, the new one, and we'll bring that over. Oop. So I need to fasten the tension belts. There we go. So we got the tension belts on. Very nicely too. Stop engine, unfasten. Right, there's no other options on there. I want to see what options we got on this trailer. Does it have any kind of auto load? Because it does say that it's for pallets. But you mean, what's, why can't you put bales on there? Um, tension belts. And that is... Oh, I see. Ah. I don't think it makes much difference where it's located. It's, it's only really for when you want to put a PTO item on there. Um, right, so anyway, we'll fasten the tension belts on there. Whoa! <laughs> oh, that is... That is awesome! <laughs> the number of tension belts on that trailer is just phenomenal. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. that. That is absolutely brilliant. I have genuinely never seen anything like that. That is... That's, that's webbing. That's, that's not pallets. That's not straps. That's webbing, that is. That's, that's completely different. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, I love that. That is that is really good. Um, see, I was going to be putting a... Right. Did I... Yes, I did have it following. Um, I was going to be having a picture of the... Uh, oh, let me go. Let me back up a minute. I want to let that car come through. Sorry, person. 
Right, hopefully, yeah, now we can go. Um, yeah, I was going to use a picture of the, um, the tow bar with the, the two tractors together as my screenshot for today. However, I am wondering if maybe I should put that webbing on as a screenshot because that's quite amusing. I think we'll stick with the original plan and we'll use the, um, the other one. I know I do talk about it a lot, what I'm going to use for a screenshot, and it's kind of an irrelevant thing to talk about because you already know what I'm going to use as, um, as the screenshot. I don't get, why do the cars do this? you got all that space, you don't need to stop. There's absolutely no need to stop. Right, let's bring that one along. Of course then the other option is that we could just use that as a screenshot. That's a pretty cool screenshot, right there. Front and back, tree planters, and it is on subject. I, I do like to keep the, we'll use the mod, we'll use the mod because we're never going to use that one again, to be honest. Um, actually we might, I suppose, if there was a tractor that got stuck somewhere, we could use it again. Um, right, as I've got absolutely no idea how much time that I've got left, and I did spend quite a long time dancing between machines, we're taking this up to the fields. So, oh, I need to slow down a little bit. Um, my weekly question for this week is which map do you want? If you want more details about the map, go to the first episode of this week, which was Goldcrest number 84, and that one will have all the details of all different maps. Um, and the different maps on offer for our... Uh, the next map that we play, uh, Emerald Valley, which is a logging one, Dutch Polder, which is the one that's set in the Netherlands, that's all flat, um, Iberian Southlands, which is a four times map, massive great big scale, that would be very, very big stuff on there, um, Gurali, which is the one set in Poland, that's my personal favourite, loads and loads of little small fields, a few bigger fields as well, but there's a lot of detail on that map, I really do love it, um, and then finally we got Drummond Farm, which is a medium sized farm that is set in Ireland. Now, just because Girali is my favourite doesn't mean you have to pick that one, obviously, because it's your vote, it's your game, and if you remember the vote for Sosnovka, I expressed quite clearly that my favourite one was Old Streams, of the ones that I gave you, and that ended up being about third on the list, and we're doing Watair Valley. Um, and I'm not sorry about that, because I love Watair Valley, it's a really nice place. Um, and it's, it's, I'm just sort of pointing it out because it just shows that I don't go for the one that I want. I go for the one that you pick. I give a selection of ones that I like. But anyway, it's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. And that one is up there. So we've got everything up here. We will actually start planting, I think, in our next episode rather than today. We're waiting on the fent. It's being a little slow, but it's probably got stuck on the hill down here. It has got stuck on the hill. It is, it's slowed right down. Let's see if we can run down and see it. See what it's doing. There we go. There we go. Go on, you can do it. You can do it, buddy. I, I, I'm absolutely loving this webbing. I, I am going to use a photo opportunity for this. I'm going to, um, we'll, we'll load some other pallets or something onto this trailer and we'll, we'll make use of it so that we can do a screenshot with all that webbing because that's just brilliant. I really do like that. We get this up to the top of the field um, and then in our next episode we can actually start planting this field at last. It's about time because we've been, we've been talking about this all this week. Um, so yeah, we, we, we really want to get a move on and start planting because, quite frankly, it's going to take a while. And what I'm going to do is we'll spend an episode getting everything set up here. And um, I'm going to turn that one off now. We can just stop him, just like that. Um, we will spend an episode getting everything set up and ready up here. And then once we've done that... Um, you know, we will sort of see them working and we'll load up the pallets and then we'll load up another pallet when one of them runs out. But after that, the plan is I'm going to change the settings so that the worker um, buys their own seed. And then we can just leave the two tractors working in the field um, and we won't have to worry about them, which means that we can carry on with a few other things that we want to get done. But anyway... If you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give me a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.